So we, these are the two uh, most popular 3PS implants available on the market. Here you have the Coloplast device, and this is a 20 centimeter cylinder. As you can see, there is on one of the uh, cylinders, I put a rear tip extender, just to illustrate uh, this for everyone. This is a uh, touch uh, pump, and here is the uh, reservoir with a lockout valve. This uh, feature is really nice. It prevents auto inflation uh, when uh, the erection is not desired. Now, one of the things about the cylinder is when you look at a cylinder, you can say, well, this is an inflatable cylinder, but actually the back of the cylinder is a non-inflatable. So if this is a 20 centimeter cylinder, five centimeter from the back of the device doesn't inflate. Now, why is that important? Because what happens is when this is introduced into the body, this is introduced into what we call the crus, the part of the penis that's attached to the bone. And when it's in there, in the beginning, everything is nice and tight. But over time, the scar tissue loosens up over the hard part, but scar tissue doesn't loosen up over the inflatable part. And that's what makes the inflatable implant more rigid than a malleable implant, because it's always hard, then the scar tissue will then loosen up. And when this loosens up, then the penis starts to wobble, and one may not get an erection pointing up, and it may be pointing down. So if one adds rear tip extender like this, now you have not only the five centimeter from before, you also have another two centimeter. And then, so now you've increased the non-inflatable portion of the cylinder, which deteriorates the quality of the erection. So it's much better to put as much of the inflatable component in the penis uh, than to add rear tip extender. So for example, this is a 20 centimeter device. If I have a patient that measures 19 centimeter, I will put a 20 and then cut a little bit from the back here, and that improves the erection. Rather than adding a, um, a one centimeter rear tip extender to a device that me measures uh, 18 centimeters. So it's much, much better to, to do that. And it's, a, it's something that we learn from doing a lot of implants over time and seeing patients in the post-operative period and seeing patients three months, six months after their surgery. It's very important to pick the right cylinder. Now this is an AMS cylinder and you can see that there is a definite difference in the girth of the cylinder. So again, this is a very good device as well. And the back of it is a four and a half centimeter, which is a little bit less than the coloplast implant. Uh, but unfortunately, the uh, rear tip extenders are very thin. They're nine millimeter in diameter, which is just like a, a, one of those yellow pencils. And so the penis will wobble if the doctor uses a lot of uh, rear tip extenders and uh, you uh, uh, decrease the quality of the erection. This is a good device for the thinner, smaller penises. Uh, if a patient has a, a penis less than five inches, uh, an MS device is, is something that is uh, something appropriate. Anything greater than five inches, I feel a patient will benefit for more girth and more rigidity, which is obtained with the uh, Coloplast device. So it's important to tailor the implant to the patient's anatomy, the patient's age, the uh, size of the scrotum and so and and the strength of the manipulation uh, of the of the fingers of the of the device so we have uh, on the market three types of cylinders available we have the coloplast cylinders uh, which have more girth we have the uh, AMS CX cylinders which are cylinders that will expand in girth only and not in length and then we have the cylinders called the LGX, which expands in both girth and length. Now, many patients come in and they say, well, you know, I want an LGX. The problem with the LGX is that it increases, the length increases by 18 centimeters. So when you pump it, it goes uh, uh, another 18, 18%. By 18% of the total length, it will, it will increase. Now, problem with that is because you, the length will increase when you size the penis, you sort of have to undersize the device because if you have a penis that measures 18 centimeter and you put an 18 centimeter device and it increases by 18 percent, 
you are essentially oversizing the, uh, the penis and that's not very good. It'll create pressure on the, on the glands. When you undersize the uh, cylinder, it, a scar tissue will form with the undersized cylinder if the patient do not start to inflate and deflate early. So we've learned that it's very important for patients to start cycling the device as early as three days after the surgery and to do that religiously twice a day in a hot bath. However, if the patient has too much pain or too much swelling and one cannot feel the deflation valve, you cannot inflate. So it's very important for the surgeon to consider uh, um, issues during the surgery such as limiting the dissection, making sure that there is no bleeding around the pump, making sure that the pump is positioning well, uh, and being very meticulous with uh, irrigation so that there is no swelling after the surgery so that the patient can start cycling the device. One needs to think of the penile implant like shoulder surgery. Scar tissue is gonna to start to shape itself very early in the postoperative period, and you need to cycle the device to get the maximum benefit and avoid uh, a trapping of a cylinder in a, with folds. It's very important to start to do that on um, post-up day number three. And it's like rehab after shoulder surgery. If you keep your shoulder in a sling for two weeks after surgery, you get a frozen shoulder. And then the doctor is going to need to bring you in the, in the uh, operating room and give you anesthesia to break the adhesions and manipulate the shoulder. Thank you.